Hi guys, my name is Jacqueline, I'm Lisa Tispa, you can call me Jackie, and welcome to my TED Talk. Today we're going to be talking about the historical explanation of motivation. So if you're wondering what motivation is, I'm going to let you know. Motivation is this magical word which converts an impossible goal to I am possible. It's a very powerful tool to our survival, which has been taught to us since we were babies. For example, picking up our heads by ourselves, crawling, walking, talking, etc. You know, when you're barely learning how to walk, you have somebody there holding you, you have somebody else on the other side cheering you, making gestures like reaching out their hands um trying to make you go to them and you have like as a baby you already have this goal that you're gonna go over there to them so i feel like that's motivation in a way that's my example so the term motivation is derived from the latin word mover which means to move which is a force which makes a person you know to move or to behave a certain way because they are trying they are trying to fulfill their preset goal that they are trying to achieve so there are five stages of motivation there's instincts needs and drives arousal cognitive and hierarchy of needs uh the first one is basic it's just the basic needs going back to the baby babies cry if they need anything uh the second one is uh needs and drives so needs needs drive and drive creates needs and drive is to get a need fulfilled for example, when you're working out, you're really thirsty, but you got like 50 more sets of squats, like you got like 15 more squats to do, and you have your friend there, and you don't wanna look like a chicken, like you you don't wanna be looking like you, can, you're like giving up like real quick, uh, you know, or your trainer or something like that, and they're telling you like to do the 50 squats first or to drink water, and you just have this battle on your head, you're just like, water or? do i want to look like a chicken and you're like no I'm, I'm gonna go i'm gonna go with the 50 squats and you do the 50 squats and then you get the the water in my example to wrap it all up needs equals water for that example um arousal is alertness it's like to find a natural high so like a roller coaster like you can go and find like the biggest one and you're gonna try to um to ride it just because you get this adrenaline, this rush, this alertness in your body to, you know, feel good and, you know, just to have that natural high. Um, the fourth one is cognitive, so it's rushing out things, so knowing like the rights and wrongs. And the last one is the hierarchy of needs, which is the basic physical needs. Let's get into the instinct theories and drive reduction theory. So what's the instinct theory? Well, instincts are innate behavior patterns that ha causes a response a certain way to aid our survival. So instincts were made by William Woodnett um, in the 1870s, then expanded by William Douglas, not Douglas, not McDonald's, Douglas, who found 18 instincts in 1908, then later expanded to 4,000 and above by later... Um, psychologist but then later was outdated by biological premises and because it was com it was completely dismissing um emotion if you will and it was also disregarded due to the lack of scientific evidence because the motivation extended more than just um than just needs and there isn't really any explanation or justification that occurrence of instincts or compulsion is over our Help behavior. us understand what drives us. Let's start with the first theory, an evolutionary perspective. For a while, in the early 20th century, it was popular to think of all behaviors as instincts or innate drives to act a certain way. But this so-called instinct theory was misguided, in part because the presence of a tendency doesn't always mean it's supposed to be there. Like, we can imagine why a bunch of people might start rioting at a heated soccer match, but to say that they're supposed to, a little short-sighted. Evolution is a far more complex, chaotic, and interesting process than that. Plenty of behaviors could just be accidents of evolution. Late paleontologist Stephen Jay Gould called these accidents spandrels, or traits that rather than being adaptive, just stuck around as byproducts of other processes. Today, we define instincts as complex, unlearned behaviors that have a fixed pattern throughout a species. And so, drive reduction theory um, was formulated by Clark Hull in 1943. Um, he believed us humans have biological needs that direct our behavior. According to the theory, um, motivation behavior starts off with a need that, which causes a drive to develop. Uh, drive is a psychological 
a state or feeling that stimulates a response or a series of actions um, created to achieve a goal that will satisfy that particular need. Um, and again, need is a specific state within a person that energizes behavior and goes a target or object of a motivational sequence or behaviors that have been driven to achieve. So there are two drives. There is, um, there's primary and there's secondary. So the primary is innate biological needs. So hunger, thirst, and desire to do the deed. The second one are driven, are drives that are associated with primary drives. So getting a job um, and a salary, providing food to your body, clothes and shelters and stuff like that. Um, when our body is low in supply or certain things, a drive is built within our bodies to move us to satisfy that need. We um, like have a tendency to maintain a balance within the biological system known as, known as homeostasis, which is um, vital in directing our behavior. If we wait to fulfill, um, to fulfill that need, our neurons will fire up and like get really pumped up. Um, which will call the which will cause the nervous system to become more aroused and the drive will become more stronger and the stronger the thrive the more motivated you are to decrease that drive so deviation from homeostasis can produce psychological needs homeostasis is achieved once directly behaviors in initiative to meet the needs unsatisfied psychological needs create negative states of uh, tension and satisfied and satisfied reduce the drive and uh, return the body to homeostasis so if you didn't understand what I just said of the last two well how do I simplify that so like your mind is like we gotta do this we will have to do this we have to do this and you get all bugged and you're just like you know what we should do this like you get really pumped and you're like okay we're gonna do this so you guys do it and then your like mind and your body like tries to relax and tells you like hey you suggest that a psychological need or drive simply compels us to reduce that need this is called the drive reduction theory this could be as simple as hearing my stomach growl and looking for a burrito my need is food my drive is hunger my drive reduction behavior is burrito drive reduction is all about maintaining your body's homeostasis i forgot to say goodbye on my ted talk so i'm saying it now goodbye and thank you for watching okay bye